In this video I talk about a multivariate normal distribution. It's based on my example script example underscore mv normal, mv for multivariate. In this example script I confine myself to the bivariate or 2D example. It's the only one that can be easily visualized by plotting uh, the PDF surface or the contour lines of the PDF. I start in line 2 with the preamble. I define two color maps, one for the contour lines and one for the surface plot of the PDF. If you want to learn more about the multivariate normal, please have a look in this uh, Wikipedia page. I will not show it in this video. The multivariate normal distribution is a, of course a generalization of the univariate distribution about which we have learned in the last video. It's characterized by a mean vector. In this case I've chosen the mean vector to be 2,1 and the covariance matrix, which in this case is 2 by 2. And it's valid if it's symmetric and positive definite. You see from the definition that it's symmetric. And we can check the positive definiteness by having a look at the eigenvalues. The matrix is a valid covariance matrix if all eigenvalues are positive. Now let's start with uh, a surface plot of the graph of the probability density function. It's a function of two variables now and we can produce a surface plot of the PDF in the usual manner, we generate a grid. We compute the probability density function by calling the function MVN, multivariate normal PDF. The arguments are the following. The first one is the matrix of X and Y in the first and second column, then Second argument is the mean vector, and the third argument is the covariance matrix. We proceed in the usual manner, and we already see the surface plot of the PDF in figure one. Let's put some labels in the title. We can have a look at this PDF from different angles by rotating. It's bell-shaped, but not axially symmetric. So let's have a look at the contour lines. Uh, in order to get contour lines with well-defined probability content, I have to define the contour levels in the following way. I compute the maximum value of the PDF, which is at the mean. And then I define the contour levels as shown in line 33. So it's the maximum times the exponential of minus 1 over 2, minus 2 over 2, minus 3 over 2, and so on. If the levels are defined in this way, then the probability content, I store it in the vector PC in line 3, 5. Then the probability content can be computed via the chi-square distribution to be exact by the CDF, the cumulative distribution function of the chi-square distribution at the values 1 to 6 with 2 degrees of freedom. So the second argument is the number of degrees of freedom, which is equal to the dimension 
of this multivariate uh, normal distribution. So you see the values of PC in the command window, and you will also see them in the plot of the contour lines. So let me skip to line 51 and finish the plot of the contour lines. You see, I have a loop in lines 39 to 42. Why? Well, this is because I want to uh, assign a different color to each contour line and to get the corresponding uh, probability content in the legend. So let's have a look at figure 2. Uh, the probability content of the innermost contour line is about 39% the probability content of the outermost contour line is about 95%. It's easy to see from the functional form of the, of the PDF that the contour lines are ellipses. However, in, in the general case, the axes of these ellipses are not parallel to the axes of the coordinate system. We can, however, rotate these ellipses into an orientation which is parallel to the coordinate system by rotating the covariance matrix into diagonal form. You probably know that a symmetric, positive, definite matrix can always be rotated into diagonal form. The rotation is an orthogonal matrix, which can be computed by the function eig, which we've used before to compute the eigenvalues. So let's call eig again, but now with more output arguments. D, the second output, is a diagonal matrix, which contains the eigenvalues of sigma in its diagonal. <clears throat> the matrix U is the rotation matrix, and we will not need uh, the matrix V. Now we rotate sigma into diagonal form. If we have a look at this matrix, we see that the diagonal contains the eigenvalues in ascending size. I rotate now by pi over 2 in order to get the eigenvalues in descending size in the diagonal. Now the matrix looks like this. Let's now repeat the graphical representation. So I now we go back to the beginning of the loop and we recompute the PDF and the contour lines. Note that the maximum value of the PDF is not changed by the rotation. This is constant. So, and now continue up to line 51. And now we see the rotated PDF in figure 3 and the rotated contour lines in figure 4. The probability contents have not changed. We've just rotated the PDF and its contour lines into an orientation which is parallel to the coordinate system. In terms of statistics, this means that the components x1 and x2 are now uncorrelated and even independent. If we try another rotation, uh, this will have no effect if the distribution is already in a <coughs> direction parallel to the axis. This will of course not change. So if we do the same again, we will end up with the same covariance matrix in diagonal form. Next, I want to show you how to fit 
a bivariate normal distribution to data, to a sample, to a random sample of data. So first we generate a random sample of size capital N equals 1000 from the original distribution I've now restored sigma to its non-diagonal form and we call the function mvnrnd multivariate normal random number to get n random pairs xy or x1 x2 from the multivariate distribution with mean mu and covariance matrix capital sigma. So x now contains the random pairs. You can visualize them as points in the plane. And we can also fit a Gaussian mixture to this, this data by using the function fit gmdist. I will talk more about Gaussian mixtures in my next video. Here I use fit gmdist to fit a single Gaussian to the data. This can be achieved in the following way. We call it fit gmdist with argument x, the data matrix, with two columns, x1 and x2. And then I indicate this mixture has only one component. A mixture with one component is just a multivariate normal distribution. The object uh, dist f is of the class gm distribution. And if we look at its uh, main fields, we see it has one component in two dimensions. The mixing proportion of the component is one, and the mean vector is 1.94 and 1.0094. We can also extract the covariance matrix of this fitted distribution. If we look at the command window, we see that both the fitted mean and the fitted covariance matrix are quite close to their true values with a sample size of 1000. You can try to increase the sample size and you will see that uh, the fit between the, the true and the fitted values becomes even closer. So let's now plot the sample and the contour lines. I open figure 5, I plot the sample. These are 1000 points in the x1, x2 plane. Now I want to plot the contour lines of the fitted multivariate Gaussian or bivariate Gaussian in this case. To this end, I have to recompute the function values using the function MVN PDF, but now with a fitted mean and the fitted covariance matrix. I recompute the maximum, which is now at the fitted mean. I have to recompute the contour levels according to the same prescription as above. And I plot the contour lines again in different colors. And I plot the corresponding legend. So let's skip to the end. So here we see now the contour lines with the same probability contents as before. But they are, of course, slightly different. Not very much, but if you compare with figure 2, you will see slight differences. This concludes this video. In the next one, I will talk more about multivariate Gaussian mixtures and the application to the clustering of observations.